There have been quite a few ups and downs with Disney Star Wars, and it's something that we've all been noticing, the spread shot approach when it comes to what they're actually making. But this report apparently has Disney Star Wars learning something. Welcome to Star Wars Uplink. Star Wars under Disney has been quite the time. It has had incredible highs like Andor, which became my favorite thing within Star Wars, finally dethroning A New Hope for me personally, but it also had some of the lowest lows in Star Wars. For me, that's Obi-Wan Kenobi. That is, in my opinion, the worst of the Disney Star Wars shows. None of the necessarily fan service stuff that they had in that show did it for me, and I think they really wasted an opportunity with Reva. They had the potential for a really interesting character, but didn't really do much with the opportunity that they had. And overall, I, I think young Leia did well, She's honestly the highlight of the show for me, but it didn't really come together in the way that I would have liked to see uh, from a quality perspective and from a storytelling perspective. Then on the other hand, you've got like uh, the, the Mandoverse types of shows where seasons one and two of The Mandalorian, I think are incredible TV shows. I think they did a lot with the formula. One more so than two, but two really had that nice emotional ending that I think just was so well done until you get to Book of Bones. Boba Fett where it takes a lot of that away. Now, I don't personally have the problems that uh, a lot of people have with Book of Boba Fett. I, I think it is a um, misguided show that struggled with filling in the gaps between The Mandalorian seasons 2 and 3, and I think it tried to do too much, but that's just my personal opinion. Season 3 of The Mandalorian was just kind of like a holdover to, to get characters where they kind of needed to be, played it safe in many regards, and then Ahsoka didn't move the ball forward that much and was just kind of a show. Um, some good stuff in there, but not necessarily something that will keep me intrigued on a rewatch more than likely. I do want to go back and rewatch it. I think there's some good stuff there, but not necessarily uh, the biggest of detailed stories or, or nuance uh, at all, really. But when we look at Disney Star Wars as a whole, we've got huge highs like Andor, and we've got low lows like Obi-Wan Kenobi. And this is something that we've seen time and time again. I think we are finally seeing Lucasfilm learn the lessons that they need to. We'll see if they actually can accomplish uh, those lessons in the future things, but according to a report, uh, Star Wars is scaling back what they're doing in the TV space. Uh, reportedly reducing the number of Star Wars TV shows to one a year. And in this hypothetical future that we have, we have one Disney Star Wars movie and we have one Disney Star Wars TV show. Uh, maybe that's not necessarily the sustainable long-term thing, but for now that's seemingly what it's going to be. And I, I think this is a good thing with an asterisk. I think this is a good thing if they actually make a TV show instead of a limited series. Uh, back in the heydays of television, we had anywhere from 16 to 23 episodes in a season. I'm currently watching Gilmore Girls for the first time, and those seasons are about 23 episodes, if I remember correctly, which was the standard of the day. And each of those episodes are 45 minutes, and each of them have a beginning, middle, of an end, and have characters that you're drawn to that grow throughout the the shows. And this was the standard back in the day, quote unquote, meaning like five to six years ago, maybe a little bit longer. It, it kind of started going downhill when Netflix got into the, the game and really changed how people perceive TV shows going from this appointment viewing like uh, weekly shows and then to a, a binge model. And their whole goal was to disrupt the market in a way that would force companies like Disney to enter the streaming market and lose a bunch of money and uh, show that, hey, Netflix is actually the, the one to go to. There's a, a great Adam Ruins Everything video on the uh, problems with TV right now, but if Disney learns the proper lessons, clearly they're scaling back from this report, and hopefully they're focusing on a, a more focused vision, because I think that's what Star Wars needs desperately. Star Wars is now in a place where people can kind of just say, yeah, 
okay, yeah. Did you watch the new Star Wars show? Uh, not yet, but I've seen clips from it. It doesn't look that great. I've heard that numerous times from uh, friends of mine who aren't really into Star Wars, and uh, I, I know that they're, they like the movies and they like The Mandalorian, but they haven't really watched Andor or Soka or Acolyte or Book of Boba Fett. They legit just are casual Star Wars fans. So I think Disney is learning a good lesson here when it comes to the, uh, the pace that they are, are, are going to Star Wars with. They need to scale it back, and they also need to bring back movies. Uh, streaming wasn't the uh, end-all be-all that everyone expected it to. They're scaling back on the MCU TV content on Disney+. Plus. They're scaling back on the variety of things that are exclusive to just Disney+. Plus. They're still out there. They're still making things for it. But in many ways, they're scaling back the amount that we had if we look from 2020 to 2024. And I feel like this is going to ultimately be a good thing if done well. They need to focus on story. They need to focus on giving the characters and the story time to breathe. There's been a lot of controversy when we look at Acolyte and its cancellation. Whether you enjoyed Acolyte or did not enjoy Acolyte, I think we can all agree if the show had more episodes, it would be better overall. We'd have fewer threads that, that just did not feel satisfying. There are so many pieces of Acolyte story where if they had more time, if they weren't only limited to eight episodes, if they weren't limited to only eight 30 to 40 minute episodes, this show would be better if they had 16 to 20 episodes that they could play around with. Yeah, they would have to spread their budget a little bit more. The, the, backgrounds or whatever, they wouldn't necessarily look as good as they do. But I think you can also argue, like, do they actually look like they cost $20 million an episode? I don't think so. So on the one hand, they're spending lots of money on these shows, and on the other hand, they aren't giving them the time to really simmer and, and build an audience or build a story that can sustain an audience. And they aren't focused on quality. For so long, we've seen Disney Star Wars focus on variety. What is going to work? We're going to do something in The Mandalorian. We're going to do a spinoff on The Mandalorian. We're going to do something uh, about Obi-Wan. We're going to do something that's a spinoff of, of Rogue One. We're going to do this, this, and this, and kind of just see what works. If you really look at it, you can boil down Star Wars to its core tenets. Star Wars is a story about hope and characters growing through that. Finding reasons and ways to build hope. And that is something that I want to see more in Star Wars. I also want to see more... Um, I, I've personally liked how scattershot they've been in terms of let's see what works. I think that's been an okay strategy if you're looking to find what works and what doesn't work. But you've got 40 plus years of data to look at what works. Clearly, The Mandalorian worked when it was a smaller scale, sustained story. Uh, clearly, Andor works where it doesn't necessarily attach itself to the broader happenings. Star Wars, I don't think, has to support an MCU-like uh, experience. I don't think they need to, and I don't think it can sustain that. So having these variety of shows, having these movies, having all of this thing, all of the, the comics, the video games, the books, all of this come together into one cohesive storyline and story arc and, and universe, I think has hindered a lot of what Star Wars could be. I personally would love to see everything at the level of Andor in terms of the, the storytelling. Not everything has to be that tone. I know a lot of people don't necessarily like the darker, richer, um, more uh, nuanced tone of Andor, but I personally enjoy it. So no, you don't have to necessarily go for the tone and make everything Andor in that flavor. Go from this childish kind of uh, hopeful world of Star Wars to this like darker world that Andor paints. Nothing, everything doesn't have to be like that. But everything should have a story that says something. And too many times with Disney Star Wars have we seen them release a TV show or a movie that doesn't say anything. I think that's a real shame. Hopefully, this is the right move and we get to see some good stories. But maybe not. Let me know your thoughts on this idea, this theory, and this discussion in the comments below. Check out our podcast and may the Force be with you.